Welcome to Yellowstone National Park. Uh, we are here on the western side of the park, uh, looking at these cliffs here, which may not look super impressive to you, uh, but they have an interesting story to tell. These are the, I suppose, somewhat famous um, obsidian cliff that's in this part of Yellowstone between uh, Mammoth and Nor the Norris Geyser Basin. Uh, and so this large mass of rock here is all part of one lava flow. This is a lava flow <clears throat> that cooled and solidified into obsidian and it erupted about 105,000 years ago uh, outside of the caldera. So this was a, a lava flow, but unlike the lava flows you see in Hawaii or Iceland, which are very fluid, <clears throat> this lava flow was essentially a lot like toothpaste. It was very thick and pasty, what we would call viscous. It didn't probably flow very far from its source. I think the vent's actually about a kilometer, less than half a mile to the east. And so, the uh, process in which we get obsidian and just to kind of satisfy you a little bit here you can see uh, how black and glassy this material is here um, incredibly glassy here's a little chip of it that came off so this is the material in which native americans made arrowheads and spearheads and other sorts of tools uh, but the way we get this type of um <coughs> uh, rock is when we have a real silica rich lava basically a felsic magma or a something a rhyolitic magma that erupts at the surface <clears throat> cools very quickly uh, but the other thing that's often common about these is that they they contain very little water in their internal makeup so it's what we call a kind of a dry magma so if you can get this type of magma to erupt uh, and it has um, it cools quite quickly then you'll end up with this very glassy um, rock that we know as obsidian now the entire cliff face is not all 100 percent obsidian um, a lot of it is obsidian but there's portions of it that have crystallized at least a little bit to form more of kind of a, a rhyolite or in places you can see here <clears throat> we have these uh these uh, little white what we call spherulites where the the glass is uh, partially crystallizing um, and so it's not entirely all obsidian um, but much of it is oftentimes you see these big kind of pockets in here these are big gas cavities uh, so as the gases are attempting to escape there's a big pocket right up here um, from this lava they'll tend to kind of concentrate and then eventually create some of these big uh, cavities we see here. Um, but pretty, a pretty impressive cliff nonetheless. <clears throat> Obsidian is interesting because there's a rock, you know, we think of rocks as being made up of minerals. Um, obsidian is made of no minerals. Obsidian is actually unordered elements. Uh, it's glass, so this has no minerals in it. There are no crystals in this obsidian. All the elements and all the materials are unordered uh, with no crystalline structure. So it's it's interesting that it's, you know, we call it a rock, because that's all we, that's the best place we can put it with the igneous rocks, because it obviously comes from volcanoes. Uh, but in some ways it doesn't meet the true definition we've kind of created for, uh, for rocks. We can see that there's some columns <coughs> running up and down this thing. So as this lava flow cooled slowly, well, or quickly, I suppose, because it's at the surface, um, I did develop some crude columns that probably are best seen from the road, um, but there are some, some columns in here like you might see in basalt. Anytime you can get a lava flow cooling more or less uniformly from top to bottom, you can develop these fractures in it, and those fractures will be separated from an adjacent fracture by a 120 degree angle. Can't quite make that with my thumb and forefinger. Um, and if you get enough of those, then of course you'll have uh, a hexagon type shape or pattern. Uh, here's a nice piece here where we can see <clears throat> that the obsidian's not all pure. Then in places, um, there's some <clears throat> crystallization, some of this brown material in here. Uh, but in smaller pieces where, where it's 
pure or fairly pure this is the type of material uh, that people even anciently and even today would shape uh, with pressure flaking and make different types of tools uh, spear points and that sort of thing uh, let's go back this way and see <clears throat> what other things we can see in some places we can see uh, there's some flow banding so you can actually see here as this lava just oozes out very thick and pasty there's actually some textures that form in it again here you can see <clears throat> some crude layering in the lava flow almost horizontal but not quite uh, the big columns and then <clears throat> obsidian is interesting because it's usually black that's the color you typically see and it's black from the small inclusions or impurities of iron um, sometimes you get samples like this where you get a little bit of black mixed with some orange or, or red uh, and this is sometimes known as pumpkin obsidian um, so this is just where some of that iron had already oxidized before it was kind of trapped in with the rest of the glass so a couple interesting pieces there uh, and then we could probably go up the cliff a little bit there's a real nice pocket there of uh, really nice obsidian so in places it just depends on where <clears throat> where the uh that pure silica rich lava is crystallizing as to how how much of that pure obsidian you're going to get in any given location um i think here we can kind of see some of these crude columns forming in this outcrop here go up just a little bit further oh there's a nice little pocket with some of these these vesicles <clears throat> these are sometimes called uh, lithophases when they're filled in with material these gas pockets have filled in with other mineral material there's a nice rounded one right here you can see some of these as well uh, again real dense obsidian that would be the kind of ideal stuff you'd look for for making arrowheads but the characteristics change a little bit <clears throat> as we work up it's getting more of the the spherulites um not as pure and clean as we saw in other places uh, a lot of it's weathering out on the ground and it just rains so the the black really kind of pops nicely oh here's a nice little sample with with these rounded little spherulites inclusions inside the obsidian really great sample there so yeah obsidian cliff just a really cool uh feature of course this is a national park so uh it goes without saying but just as a reminder not to uh, collect any of the obsidian just look at it appreciate it there's plenty of other places uh in the west to look for obsidian if you want to collect some obsidian so i uh, hope you enjoyed this episode uh, always feel free to send any support you can through the paypal link on the description or the donate button on the banner and uh, we'll do some more here from Yellowstone National Park, Wyoming.